So just before we go to the clinical nuances of uh, uh, therapy trial, just a brief recap of what is PSMA all about and what is PSMA theranostics. We are all using gallium PSMA for scans. So PSMA is a transmembrane protein which is a type 2 transmembrane protein, which is 100 to 1,000 times overexpressed in cell membranes of prostate cancer. It is overexpressed at a higher grade with metastatic disease and, uh, and castration-resistant prostate cancer. We typically use gallium PSMA HPEDCC for the scan, which is PSMA 11. And when it is labeled with lutetium PSMA 617, it can be targeted for therapy. Now, what is the theranostics? The fundamental principles of theranostics are that uh, you have a scan, which is gallium PSMA PET CT. As you see, this patient, we started in Radiation Medicine Center, Tata Hospital premise in April 2017. Roughly in three years, we have treated 200 patients of MCRPC. Just to give you the background, so you have a gallium PSMA scan, and this is lutetium PSMA post-treatment scan, you see exact same distribution and lutetium is a therapeutic radioisotope. So the, the strong point of this therapy is its excellent tolerability and very minimal side effects. Just to show you an example, this patient has undergone uh, treatment with nine cycles, docetaxel and abiraterone previously and had, a, uh, uh, and had a progressive disease. This is the gallium PSMA scan and after three cycles of PSMA, uh, lutetium PSMA therapy. This is the gallium PET CT. This is taken from our series. So uh, th there is a lot of encouragement with respect to lutetium PSMA peptide receptor radio ligand therapy in prostate cancer in MCRPC setting. So what has therapy P study? This is an ongoing trial with some preliminary results yet. So it's 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 a kind. It has been the uh, eligibility in this trial was MCRPC patients who have undergone a docetaxel treatment and had shown progressive disease. And that is the time when the uh, patients were randomized. It was a one is to one randomization. And if you see the there was a lot of stress on the imaging component. So you have to have at least more than 20 sites of disease in this uh, uh, to get uh, 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 20 sites of disease and resistant uh, metastatic following post docetaxel. The SUV max in PSMA PET CT has to be more than equal to 20. And you always require to do dual tracer PET CT to select. I just tell you the example how they have done. You see, uh, in our setup, we do now five kinds of a subset. And this will be a major, uh, a bit of an ahead of time. But a very important thing is that we are going to probably individualize which patient is going to go by dual tracer PET CT. And if you see, this is the group of patient where it was eligible. So you have a PSMA, which is showing very high uptake. FDG does not show anything. So this is a group, uh, one subset, where this is a congruent PSMA PET CT. These are the two groups of patients who were eligible with PSMA, uh, lutetium PSMA, and cabazitaxel uh, randomization. Whereas this group of patients, when you have FDG uptakes more than PSMA, these are the patients who will not be benefited with PSMA therapy. So in this trial, what they have done is there should be no discordant FDG plus PSMA minus disease, which will be centrally reviewed by a committee. And by that way, they will do a randomization between lutetium PSMA 617, which will be giving 200 millicury three monthly to uh, six weekly treatment. In our setup, most of the setup, they are giving between two to three monthly. But in this trial, they have used this uh, therapy every six weekly. Whereas cabazitaxel three weekly, 20 milligram per square meter as per uh, the standard norms. And then post-treatment spec CT, if you find a very good response, as I showed you, you can see like this patient within three therapies, if you have seen with LUPSMA has almost zero uh, uh, lesions in gallium PET CT. So if you get this kind of a results, then one should suspend treatment and reconsider upon the progression. Uh, so uh, taking that, I just give you a small um, insight into this is if you see, see in our experience, what we see, if you see this kind of a lesion where FDG uptake is high in some of the lesions uh, here, it is partial discordance where FDG is high, we find that there is less response. So just give, trying to give you the insight, this is one 
uh, study that was published from our group of Radiation Medicine Center, Tata Hospital, Amit and Kumar, both are co-authors for this from uh, and one of our MD students who have published. And if you see, as the FDG uptake goes up, the therapeutic efficacy of PSMA goes down. So the progressive disease in our set is when you have a FDG SUV of 15.1 is 80% versus 40% when it is up to uh, five. So taking that uh, into the background, the therapy trial has uh, uh, randomized 200 patients and uh, it has been divided into 19 and 101 nearly equal and ultimately 98 patients were treated with LUPSA arm, PSMA arm and cabazitaxel with uh, 85 patients. Now the primary endpoint of this therapy trial was PSA response and as per the PCWG uh, criteria uh, was defined by PSMA reduction of greater than 50% from baseline. Secondary endpoint was PSA progression free survival and adverse uh, events. Uh, the things that were not uh, are there in this trial, but not reported. It is a, a relatively new ongoing trial. So objective tumor response by resist 1.1. And as we see the symptoms and quality of life were seen by pen response and pen PFS. Whereas the imaging was done by resist 1.1 for response and radiographic PFS. And then after all the health related quality of life and overall survival. So these were not reported when the the preliminary results were uh, were uh, reported in this uh, March 2020 ASCO trial. So Sir, just to only you, one, one minute left. Yeah. So 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 if you see, this has a uh, median follow up of 13.3 months, and uh, the data was uh, 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 was presented in 31st March 2020. The cutoff. And if you see the 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 uh, more or less they uh, they were matched in all respect both in the cabazitaxel and LUPSMA arm, the Gleason score divisions also were very well matched. And just to show you the preliminary result from the primary endpoint, the, the PSA response was 37% in cabazitaxel arm, whereas 66% in LUPSMA arm. So there is a 29% absolute increase in LUPSMA uh, PSMA therapy arm. And uh, the overall, uh, the safety results were also published. And the safety results is that you see neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, and uh, dry mouth and dry uh, eyes in LUPSMA, which is this. And, uh, and the uh, diarrhea and dysgeusia and neuropathy in the cabazitaxel arm, that these are the percentages, overall 54 and 35. So with this preliminary result, the final impression by the group was in men with progressive uh, uh, disease following docetaxel, LUPSMA was more effective, uh, active than cabazitaxel with fewer, uh, fewer grade three, grade four adverse effects. And PSA, PFS, I have not shown this because it was a preliminary, the carb separation was good. And it represents, so LUP, they concluded that LUPSMA represents probably a good potential new class of therapy for men with MCRTC. Thank you.